Thank you for listening to Namat's Movie Reviews Podcast, available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Stitcher. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Reddit, Instagram, and MeWe. And of course, be sure to visit mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, on to the show. Breaking news, stay at home. That is the order tonight as the coronavirus pandemic spreads. We need to bend the curve in the state of California. Social distancing works. Stay home save lives. Your actions can affect my health. It's critically important that everyone follows the orders that we are given. The governor of California came out with a new set of restrictions. One of those restrictions was you can no longer sing in church anymore. Period. Full stop. And I remember when he said that and I heard that I was like, (laughs) okay, it's on. More than 50,000 Americans have now died from this virus. Christian singer and activist Sean Foyt leading what's called Let Us Worship. He called it a worship protest. The organizers used the pretense of religion, and that simply was not right. If Jesus were here right now, he absolutely would wear a mask. Meanwhile, suicide rates are exploding. Drug and alcohol use is ravaging America, rioting and, and destruction and unrest, and there's no church to bring the hope. I get a letter from the city prosecutor saying that you're violating the CDC requirement. We reserve the right to arrest your church members. Every thought I had was I wanted to end it. That's scary. If you've observed recurring violations of the safer at home order, in this case, snitches get rewards. It's wild that this is happening in America and it's wild that people are okay with it. There was a a man that we met He grew up in the communist country. He grabbed my hands and he said, all the things that are happening right now is how it began for us. America needs to wake up. You have to wake them up. Now that is where communism and Christianity have a headlong clash. How close is Christian nationalism to white nationalism? It is close. There are things happening today that are pushing people to a second American revolution. Christians are rising up, I'm telling you guys. This guy is probably responsible for hundreds of deaths. You know how valuable your life is? Jesus, we have to heal this country. What people like Sean are saying about what God says, oftentimes is false. You are not a Christian! There's a pandemic, there's a plague, Here's a move of God that's going to change America. Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Perkovich, and this is episode number 493. Available now on digital and DVD is Super Spreader, a documentary that chronicles evangelical Christian singer Sean Fiocq as he stands up for religious liberties during the COVID lockdowns by staging a series of mass outdoor worship concerts leading to the Let Us Worship movement, a rousing documentary that dives headfirst into a clash between religious freedom and the government overreach during a time of crisis. Super Spreader also serves as a timely reminder on the importance of community prayer and healing, especially during these divisive times. And for more information about Super Spreader, please go to superspreaderfilm.com. Um, there you got links where you can rent, uh, you could buy, you can um, uh, the streams for the movie, you can buy the DVD, um, send in requests, uh, questions, etc. Um, uh, it's a really good, good looking website, I got to say, uh, just on my end here. And uh, joining me now is the director of Super Spreader, Mr. John. Josh Fran and Josh, I thank you so very much for your time today. Matt, it's an honor and great to meet you as well. So this is documentary is really interesting. From what I've I've did my from my my research, supposedly um, uh, Sean and uh, the film's producer Michael Molden, they were actually approached during the whole uh, kind of latest worship movement thing um, by Vice and Showtime to to ask if they want to do a documentary, um, and they knew 
that um, if they allowed this, that they couldn't, you know, there's a very good chance that they might be, you know, uh, the narrative might be taken out of their hands and they could be used as ridicule or, or, or anything else. But they had the idea in their head, but hey, maybe a documentary is a way to go that we can chronicle this and put it together. And Josh, that's when you kind of came into to to the to, to, to the picture here. Um, did you know Sean and Michael beforehand, or is this kind of the first time that you met them? How did you kind of like uh, come into the, their world and, um, and with the idea of um, filming what was going on with the whole kind of let us worship movement? That's a good question. Uh, Sean and and Michael were both uh, new to me. I had been I had known about Sean um, through the let us worship events that he was doing. I, I remember the Rolling Stone did an article on him and on the movement called, and it was the headline was Jesus Christ Super Spreader. <laughs> and I thought it was an interesting title. And I was curious about, because uh, he was in the news. I think he was, he was the only guy that was, <laughs> I think he was the only guy that was on tour during COVID. And I remember, you know, early on, I'd showed up to one of his Let Us Worship events out in Kerrville, Texas. And I didn't, I showed up, this was kind of like as COVID was happening and I was yeah. I showed up wearing a mask and it was outside. And I was just like, this is, I don't know what to think about this. Like there's something that's going on here, but we're being told all these things about masking and COVID, how, those, how COVID spreads. And so I felt the innate tension just going to the event. But then I also realized that there's some amazing things that were happening here as well. And I think that tension or that tension was uh, what I was feeling, but also I think tension is actually what makes really good storytelling. Mm -hmm. And when you have a controversial character or controversial story um, mixed in with exploring topics that everyone's gone through, I mean, with, with COVID. And um, I think that those were, I saw the ingredients there for like a, a really good story and something that I was just personally interested in myself of where do I land on all this? Um, but to your point, I I wanted to create a documentary that explored both sides of the story and not yeah. just uh, was heavy handed on, hey, here's my point of view on, on COVID. I wanted just to basically take the whole story and present it and you can watch it and then, you know, however you want to interpret it, wherever you land on the subject matter, even if you're not religious. Um, I wanted to to create a a film that was that explored both both stories. What's really interesting, I, I read that you were not looking to make a like a Christian film per se. You wanted to really get yeah. to the grittiness of the story. Um, and it is something that you approach with with a lot of questions. When it comes to getting to that the core of of the of the themes in the movie, you know, you talk to dissenting voices, you know, you talk to people who didn't, uh, weren't on board with the whole kind of like let us worship kind of thing, you know, being where we're, and a lot of times these people were Christians themselves, but they were very much like, you know, we're not, you know, Sean doesn't really represent us and this is not really, uh, um, we, we don't encourage this kind of behaviour. Some people even protested against him. It then came about different themes, like Christian nationalism, et cetera. How important was it for you to make sure that those voices were in the documentary as well, that they're not only you're showing Sean's perspective of why he was doing this and why it was so important, but also the other side? Because, you know, I, I'm, I'm, it's it's kind of weird, isn't it? Because it's not that long ago that we went through this stuff, but it feels like a million years ago, you know? Um, yeah, and cool. And sometimes I think we kind of forget just how much of intimidation and fear and concern and all of it very genuine as well that we had during that time. And I think it was really important on your behalf that you kind of tapped into a lot of that stuff because, you know, when you have putting events together like Sean did, of course, you know, yourself said you went there with a mask on and everything else. You wanted to make sure that you were protecting yourself and, and your loved ones. But uh you know, I think it is very important that you showed all those sides to the story and made sure that when people are watching it, they understand that they're not watching what could, you know, what maybe people, someone could perceive to be, you know, from the outside looking in this propaganda that it's it's actually a document, exactly. it's an exploration, and it's something that all the information on the table is for the viewer to decide where they stand on it at the end of it. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. And um, I, I there were so many topics, I mean, you saw the film and there's, there's so many topics coming out of COVID. I mean, Christian nationalism is, is one of them. Um, the rise of suicides and depressions. I mean, I think that 
America, I mean, the world is sort of coming out of COVID in this a little bit of this fog and like, what do we just go through? Mm. And it was it was my intention uh, to include people from both sides, just because it's it's just important. People are, I it's just my personal view that there's just a lot of people that are yelling at each other instead of engaging in a conversation on on these topics. Yeah, and it was more important for me to make a film that was that started dialogue. Um, and started discussions. And that in, that meant including um, a lot of people that I didn't necessarily agree with or ideologically agree with, but I wanted to hear them out. And I wanted to, um, or for me, it was just important just to have that conversation myself. And there's a lot of good points and a lot of valid things that um, both sides of the table brought to, um, brought, brought to the table. But I think that that's that's life, right? No one's, <laughs> I, I believe it's like there's light and dark, there's good and evil, but then yet there's this gray zone where it's like, if I can see where you're coming from and you can see where I'm coming from and we can just agree and have a conversation, like that's, <laughs> it's just basic, basic humanity 101. Um, but I think the struggle is now is, is, is what I've learned personally in going through this documentary. There's a lot of, I'm an optimist and, but there's a lot of, bad actors that are at the table um, mm. with governments and in leadership. And I think that that's the thing that I've realized in, in my personal journey and going through the film was, Oh, wait a second. There's actually some really, really bad stuff that's, that's going on. Um, that where at first I was like, Oh, you know, standing up for religious liberties and having these events, outdoor events. Yeah. Is it that important? Is it persecution against the church? I don't really think so, but the more that I dove in with the story and being in America in the context of America, I just realized it's important to stand up for what you believe, even if there's a cost. And that was, that was, I think the the through line of the of the doc for me was really what's the cost of of courage or what's the cost of standing up for something that you believe in, um, even if there's um, a massive. Uh, even if it's, it, it, you know, the world's against you in doing so. And I think that that's part of the hero's journey too. I'm a big hero's journey guy and, um, uh, you know, like engaging with, like pushing into struggle and holding that tension. And I think that anytime that we engage with those things, even if we're wrong, we learn something um, in the process. Uh, Joseph Campbell, the hero's journey. Have you heard of the hero's journey? I have. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big, big fan of Joseph Campbell. But. You mentioned before the the cost of courage, and I think when it came to Sean and his family, um, he definitely got a lot of pushback. And it's interesting that not only did that pushback come from the usual external, you know, actors. You know, you talked about that Rolling Stone magazine, with the you know Jesus Christ super spreader, and other media narratives, etc. But there was people within his own life, you know, within his own yeah. circle, even within his own church, that really yeah. kind of like question him and even at times abandoned him and his family because of what he was doing. But he still had kind of like the courage of, of convictions to kind of stand up to what he believed in. And, and what he believed in essentially was that um, not only were we kind of like social distancing, but we were spiritually distancing as well. Yeah. And that could be very, um, I think, I think with stuff, stuff in the personally myself, I found as well at that time, not only were people not communicating one-on-one, as uh, mm-hmm. to each other as human beings, but I think there was a spiritual aspect where I myself am a Christian. I believe that everyone's a brother and sister uh, under under God, and, and and when you kind of take away that element from it, and you just yeah. if you just look at people at their most basis kind of like uh, form, then you take away something that's really special there as well. And I think that's something that was close to happening if it did not happen at certain times during the whole lockdowns. And I'm sure you know chronically that yourself. I mean, did you for, did you see kind of like how not only did Sean go through that, but did you yourself go through that as well for your own time when taking oh, yeah. on a, a subject like super spreader? Because I know for myself <laughs> um, over the last yeah. few years, uh, there's people that uh, I've lost friendships even before oh, yeah. COVID, you know, it could have been something I posted on social media because I'm a conservative Christian. And then all of a sudden it's, it's just oh, yeah. not good enough yeah. anymore. You know, I mean, it's, it's very, it's a very kind of harsh and sad reality we're living in. Yeah. I mean, well, there's a lot of interesting things there that you just said. I mean, I think that going back to what you're saying of, I mean, there's one point in the film where 
even Sean's uh, wife was against him. Mm. Yeah. That, that was a tension that I, I thought was interesting of, you know, even when your, your family and your friends lost a lot of friends for um, engaging in politics and religion. And that was, that was a question that I had of, of can those two mix or those two things supposed, supposed to mix? You hear the, the phrase church separation of church and state. Is that actually a thing or, or is there a way to um, navigate leadership or just, or, leadership in that realm um in a way that's honoring and and you know uh, that that was that was a that was something i was i was curious about it as well um but i think that um yeah i mean any <laughs> like i i i think that there is definitely coming from a spiritual perspective or looking at what we've just been through from a spiritual perspective wherever you land on this i think that everyone could sense that there is a spirit of fear that was predominant in the atmosphere. I remember leaving LA. I was living in LA and right as COVID hit, I was just like, man, there just feels like this heaviness that's just in the atmosphere. Mm. It was just this oppressive. Uh, I don't know if you call it the collective su- subconscious of what everyone was feeling and that was manifesting. Um, or if it was like a bigger spiritual force of, of fear that was, um, you know, coming in, it, it might have, you know, it might have been a, a lot of different things, but that was something that I felt really, really heavily during that was happening during during COVID, and it's not it's not a good feeling, and I think that that fear was sort of the thing that divided people and pushed people apart, and um, you know, I think that the other tension was for me, it's just like wanting just to do my part and be responsible and not spread this stuff, but at the same time realizing you know and making this like people were jumping off the golden gate bridge and and committing suicide it was like in the in the film we talk about like there was a police officer that pulls up their first uh let us worship gathering was on the the golden gate bridge and there's a police officer that pulls up and asks him you know what are you doing and he's basically like oh yeah like we're just here to worship and pray over the city and the police officer was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so glad that you guys showed up. We've been waiting for you because there's mm-hmm. been so many people that have uh, been committing suicide. And I think that that's all related to to fear and and just I, I, I personally believe that there's there's a spiritual battle or just a supernatural battle that's going on yeah. right now. Most people feel but maybe not are able to express in words of like, hey, this is this is what's going on. Um, and then, yeah, personally for me, I mean, you know, I, I've been a commercial director and working in Hollywood and, and L.A. And, you know, by taking this project on, I'm sure I'll, I'll lose out on a lot of a lot of jobs. But, <laughs> uh, you know, I've, not as much of the persecution or just the, you know, the rage as, as Sean's taken on. But but definitely if you engage in any sort of the, of this subject matter, I think there's going to be blowback. And um, I've experienced that on a on a small scale. Um, but I think that anytime there's blowback, I think that that means you're, you're onto something or there's something there that might be worth unearthing or or diving in further to. And and my intention wasn't just to be controversial, to be controversial or whatever. I just wanted just to tell, tell the story. Um, and that part alone, I think was interesting that it was, was a telltale indicator that, oh, I'm actually might be onto something bigger here because there is that that blowback. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is brought to you by Tee Public. Tee Public is the world's largest marketplace for independent creators to sell their work on the highest quality merchandise. With over 1.2 million designs, Tee Public is sure to have something you will love. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is brought to you by Amazon, the world's leading online store. Amazon is your first stop to buy a wide range of products at competitive prices with fast delivery times. Amazon is also a world-class entertainment hub that includes Prime Video, Audible, Twitch, Amazon Music, and more. Sign up with Amazon today and experience the best in online shopping and entertainment. Please support Matt's movie reviews on Patreon. Get access to exclusive content, request movie reviews and top 10 lists, and help support my work. Please click on the Patreon link in the description below. 
I think something that everyone has in in common in regards to what's happened over the last few, few years is um the role of the media and kind yeah. of like a lot of their kind of like um hypocritical uh, nature of it and even uh, flat out kind of false uh, uh, stories that come out of it as well. You're on the ground. You're trying to find the crux of the truth of what's going on here. You're documenting everything. You're, mu- you're amongst them with Sean and everyone else as well. When you look at the media narratives of these things that you've covered yourself afterwards, are you finding that the stories reported on the events that you've covered yourself to be totally different in a way that is shaped and narrated? And that did that really kind of like help you in regards to how you're kind of, uh, you know, how you're perceiving what's happening here, uh, not only in the state of the media, but in the state of America itself, where people are not really looking to find the truth, but they're looking to just push their own narrative in regards to what was go- going on over the last few years? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that, that unlocks a bigger conversation. I mean, I think that we used to go to the media for news, but like you're saying now, it's more common. It's a lot more commentary. And I think that it's interesting because I think that the landscape is shifting and people are just wanting just headline or just like headlines that are accurate and truthful. And um, I think that oftentimes I, I think culturally what we're going through right now is we're on the precipice of um, I think a, a pretty large scale new era of enlightenment or like all this bad stuff that's been going on and all this stuff is like coming to the surface and the media being part of that of, you know, we used to trust the media is, is going to like our go-to source, but I think that there is something that's coming from all this like kind of gross uh, stuff that we've seen in, in the media and narratives that there, there is something that's going to rise up from this. That's going to be even greater, but I think it is interesting from a cultural commentary perspective, how much we've relied on the media in the past. And for me personally, I don't even, I try to like get in and out of the news now just because I don't want to get sucked into, I think like it's like a vortex Mm. (laughs) of just like information and misinformation and you know, we are in the, the, the information era now and things are accelerating. Um, but it is interesting to see the shift that I feel is happening of, of, um, what we've been used to. And now it feels like there's, uh, either going to be a cleansing or something that's going to happen. That's going to come up from, um, just all this false narrative stuff. And I think people are just searching for truth these days, man. And people are just wanting just the truth. And so tired of just hearing all these crazy narratives and commentaries and, and whatever. I think that um, I think we're in for, but I, I don't know. I'm an optimist, so it might just be me. But I think that all this stuff that we've been through is going to lead to something that's that's greater. We'll see a greater greater breakthrough or something better that will come. I hope I so. Know. I hope from from like the. From that, from, from the ashes, uh, I guess you could say, from what we, we kind of went through, yeah. that we could build something better than what was before. And I think something that really needs to be looked at is kind of like the government's approach, especially in regards to overreach and a lot of the kind of the yeah. conditions and the, the laws and restrictions totally. they had. And uh, it, it's much like in in, um, in America, here in Australia, we there was um the, the faith-based communities here had a lot of kind of restrictions placed on us in regards to where we can worship, how we can, you know, what that kind of stuff and and I think a lot of people kind of felt that I don't know if it was a direct kind of like attack on the church, um, but it does feel like that a lot of times when you see some of the shackles let off, say, casinos or bars yep. or pubs, and you see people are allowed to congregate in certain places, and yet still churches are not allowed to worship, but people, uh, churches aren't still allowed to have uh, parishioners in the pews. Um, uh, until much later uh, in, in in the game. I think a lot of um, Christians and other worship uh, people of, of different faiths as well really look at that kind of like, huh, is, isn't that interesting? You know, uh, I remember clearly I had to go get groceries. Um, some of the restrictions were lax and I could get groceries, like go into a grocery store. And I was in a grocery store for an hour. And I said to my wife when I came home, why is it that I can go to a grocery store and buy groceries for an hour and congregate with other people there, but I can't stand in a church for the same amount of time? You know, it's just really kind of interesting. I think at the end of the day, commerce is a big part of that. Um, sure. But when it came to that kind of 
thing of the government overreach. Do you, is that something that really kind of stuck with you as well? Because I, I, I don't know about you, but just watching um, your movie and in, in, in when it comes to Super Spreader, there was talk about how a lot of people, a lot of the people who where we've shown in his journey came from places where their governments were very tyrannical. Um, my parents uh, left a communist country in the in the sixties to come here to Australia, and I think a lot oh. of people here in Australia that really reacted kind of negatively to what sort of governments were going on were like, you know, we've seen this before. We know kind of like how this can start, and 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 thankfully a lot of people now and even even back then were like, we've got to make sure that it doesn't descend into something even worse because. You know, you know, if you give someone an inch, they're going to take a foot. You know, and I think that's especially true for people in power. Yeah, no, I I agree, and and that's something that I've changed personally. Again, just going through the experience of making this this documentary of, um, you know, what Sean Sean ran for Congress. Yeah, he's he's a so he's a worship leader, but also ran for Congress in California. And some of the stories that he was telling me of as he was running for Congress, there's all these weird things that were happening to him and his family um, that at first I was like, really? And, and you know, but what it, it exposed me to was, yeah, there's a lot of people out there that don't necessarily like Christians or Christianity. Mm. And there's, there is really like in America, there is really an agenda um, that's, I didn't realize was, you know, I, again, I'm not, uh, you know, the, the end all be all on this, but what I realized was there are some bad actors and there are people that really don't appreciate freedom or enjoy freedom. And there's, and a lot of that, a lot of those people are in politics. Hmm. And so standing up for religious liberties at first, I was like, yeah, whatever. But like the more and more that I engaged with this, the more actually I, I changed personally of it's like it is freedom is a, a baseline thing in humanity that it's like everyone deserves freedom. And if we don't, I think that if we don't stand up for it, um, this is and then this is the thing, that, again, that I've shifted on of um, as Americans, we've just been grown used to freedom. And I think it's it was Ronald Reagan or someone like that that said freedom is only one generation away from being lost. And so if you're used to being free or you're used to freedom and you're not used to fighting for it or protecting it. Um, I think that that's, that's one of the things that I learned as, as a filmmaker is it's like um, it, it's just we're one, anyone is one slip away or one generation away from slipping into communism, like any sort of oppressive um tyranny uh anything like that and i'm a big jordan peterson fan and, and he, peterson talks uh about postmodernism and all this stuff a lot and it's something that i've really taken to heart um personally of of you know in a way this is a, this documentary was my way of of doing that myself of engaging um the conversation um or just opening the conversation up to to talk about those things. Something I wanted to talk to you about uh, when I was um, doing the interview, I heard you talk about um, faith-based movies and uh, what Christian audiences want to see and what they don't want to see. It's it, faith-based movies is something that's really important to me because I, I dedicate like a, every Sunday to a, a faith-based movie. I talk about it on my on my website and, and YouTube, um, and I watch a lot of them. Uh, I seek them out and I watch a lot of them, and I talk to a lot of faith-based filmmakers as well. Something that's really interesting, though, is that it's a genre that is really kind of restrictive in the way that oh, you yeah. can approach its stories and can tell it. <laughs> and I remember I was talking to a director. I remember the film was generation called Generational Sins. It came out like four or five years ago. And it's a faith-based, it's a faith-based movie, but it's one that's dealing with some really gritty issues. And because it's dealing with some really gritty issues, it had language and it had other things as well. Yeah. And because of that, he was saying that a lot of people um, wouldn't want in, in his churches or wherever, wouldn't want to help him support it or back it because it doesn't yeah. have the values of stuff. And he's saying to me, it's like, it was really hypocritical because what was Jesus, but someone who really got yeah. down to the dinny gritty and stay and hang out Absolutely. with the people who, who probably did, you know, uh, talk like sailors and, and didn't were unkempt and everything else. I think another example of this is that father Stu movie that came out last year. That was R-rated and no one watched it. And they had to recut it, the, the 
the Father's Year Reborn, whatever it was called. Um, and that's really interesting. But as, as a genre itself, um, and you yourself as a filmmaker, and now you've you've dived your 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 toe in the water, so to speak, in, in that kind of field with, with Super Sprout. I wouldn't call it a faith-based movie, but it does deal with themes that are in those films. What do you think is the best way forward for, for that genre of movie? Because to me, um, I think a lot of the restrictions placed on it is that there's some almost like a, a sense that needs to be a sense of perfection in the movies in regards to content, yeah. in regards to other things. And to me, that isn't Christianity. Christianity is about getting to the nitty gritty of life and, and the questions of it. And that means, you know, the content as well has to follow suit. Um, what's your thoughts on that? Well, Matt, I, I totally, I feel like we're, <laughs> I think we're on the same page with it. Cause I don't, I mean, I think a lot of, I don't, you probably have seen a lot more Christ, quote Christian films than, than I have. I, I tend to, <laughs> I tend to avoid them. <laughs> uh, I mean, not to, I mean, Hey, it's, you know, there's great, great people. I, I know a lot of, you know, great filmmakers and um, you know, people that make those sorts of films, but I don't, I don't watch them. I think that as an artist or just as a filmmaker and and the types of films that I, I watch, I, it's like, it's not, it's not those. And I think that really for me, and even with super shredder, even though it's just a documentary, it was my first one. I think it's just being honest, man. It's just like, we need honest films and it's, it's, you know, Jesus hung out with prostitutes and, you know, like it's just be, just be honest and be real. Like, and I think that I think that there are people, there are more and more people out there that are like me, that are like you, that want just to engage in content that's meaningful, that is not afraid to go to places um, that Christian films haven't gone to in the past. And I, I want to create more. I want to keep making more films like that that aren't necessarily happy you know, everything's going to be okay. It's like, I want to engage in topics and, and stories that bring up questions. And I think it's important to, I just don't know how this, it just became, because you think about like Michelangelo, you think about all the cathedrals and like all the great art and all these, you know, artists that have gone before it, like Christianity used to be in the forefront of art. Mm. And now it's like, I'm a, I'm ashamed, I'm a Christian, and I'm ashamed of like what's being made or how this genre Christian music, not, I'm not poo-pooing Christian music, all Christian music. I love, there's certain things that I do love. I'm not saying everything's bad. But on the whole, it's like, there's so many, so much more that's there that I think people are just afraid of to just to, to go into. And I'm passionate about it because um, I believe this stuff and it, it's, i you know, it's, it's important for me to create good art that's honest. And I think there's just been a lot of people that have just been scared or that have just been pushed in, into a corner. That's not, in my viewpoint, it's like, it's not, I don't, it's just not what Jesus would have done. <laughs> I don't know. I, I get riled up on it, but I, I, it's my desire as a filmmaker to keep making honest films that are provocative um and and chatting with people like yourself that are like willing just to have honest conversation that's the basis of art you know having yeah. your perspective and you might interpret something differently than than I did but like it's important just to engage and um not not be afraid just to to go around topics that might be hard to talk about or or disagreements or whatever or whatever now, I definitely think that Super Spreader does that. And for everyone out there listening now, you can go to superspreaderfilm.com. It is available now. You can uh, stream it, rent it, buy it, buy it on DVD as well. Um, I really recommend people do check out um, Super Spreader because not only is it a film, uh, Josh, that I found that it approach, it, you dive into these topics and you dive into Sean's story and all the things that come from it. But to me, at the end of it, it felt like, like a real kind of life-affirming, rousing movie as well, which I thought yeah. was really important because at the end of it, uh, at the end of the film, you know, you join Sean in this journey and you go through kind of like yeah, all, the, all, the, all the grittiness and all the hardships of it, but at the end of it, he stands tall and a lot of people are standing tall alongside with him. And I think it's really important that in movies like this, um, really start talking about the not only the social divides but the spiritual divides and, and I think this is a really great idea 
uh, to approach the subject and talk about it in from all perspectives, get it all out there. Um, because it's in, and, and then at the end of it, find a common ground. Because I think even with some of the people that were the, that were um, critical of Sean, they do agree that at the end of the day, um, to to get together and to worship um, is a really kind of important thing. I think Super Spread really does say that. And uh, I, I really appreciate the film so much, Josh, and I appreciate your time as well. Uh, mm-hmm. Congratulations to you with the movie, and hopefully we get to talk again, man. We have anything coming out whatsoever? Let me know, and I'll, I'll love to check Absolutely. it out. I'd love to talk to you about it. Love, love chatting to you. Love getting to meet you. Um, yeah, super spreader film. We are hopefully going towards the bigger platforms and it'll be on bigger platforms and all that in the next coming months. But cool. so great to chat with you, Matt. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll have some more just to, to chat with you. Some more films down the road to chat, chat together on in the future. Thank you for watching the Matt's Movie Reviews channel. Please subscribe for more reviews podcast interviews, and exclusive content. Also, if you would like to request a review and support my work, please join my Patreon via the link in the description below.